Brothers and sisters, Mrs. and Misters, the Dented Cast comes your way. Uh, loyal fans, Dented Cast. Toby Maxwell is my name. Max Bumgardner, my partner in this fantastic venture that is coming to a temporary halt. Don't know how temporary it'll be. Brother, we made 100. That was the goal we did. We looked at Mount Rushmore. We climbed it. Now we're looking down. That's right. That's right. Now we did, you know, a few mini episodes to not, not full episodes to get to our goal, but you know, that's, that's being, that's working smarter, not harder. So, <laughs> well, the number we wanted was a hundred. And uh, again, thank you for all your hard work. We, we did put a hard thing. To, I don't care if anybody cares or not. I know people do. I would like to give personal shout outs to the people I know. Listen, my cousin, Wendy Gebhardt watches every episode and she's absolutely fantastic. Love Richard you, Wendy. Goodson, love you, cousin Wendy. Richard Goodson has been just an absolute supporter. Thank you, Richard. Richard. Joey Callahan, my comedian friend. I don't want to leave anybody out. And I know people, they, they, they plugged into this because we dared to talk about things that weren't pleasant. Not everybody wanted to talk about. And the one con uh, constant compliment that I kept getting is, you know, when you guys don't disagree, you don't scream at each other, you respect right. each other. And that was that's a great compliment to hear. And I heard it from a lot of people. So thank you. What about you know, Vince? We, Vince. Uh, Venezuela. Oh, Vince Valenzuela. Absolutely, Vince Valenzuela. Yeah. Hilarious yeah. comedian in, Atlanta, in uh, Seattle, Washington. Thank you, Vince. Uh, again, if I excluded you right now, I'm not excluding you on purpose. But Johnny thank Vegas. You, thank you. Thank you. Johnny Vegas in the UP of Michigan. Absolutely true. Uh, yep. Johnny Jones Gibson, I know, is listening to us. He's from yep. Los Angeles. I don't know. Anybody, any friends of yours that are, are listening? Or I'm your only Zero. I don't, I don't have any friends. So I'm uh, your friend, buddy. Yeah. I won't loan you money, but I am your friend. No, um, I, I don't think anybody. I don't think anybody I know listens on a regular basis so you know well, or watches and that's okay and and i just think that we, we are doing something here that we went out on a limb it was different it wasn't sexy talking about the kardashians who they're sleeping with this week blah 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 but you can find that anywhere else on the internet you know and i will i will say this though okay go ahead i'm sorry 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 about that. no 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 not that and i was just going to say that uh we are starting something new here and we're breaking new ground and anytime anybody does that it's not People don't flock to it because they've never seen it before. That's all. I, I want to say this to my son, okay? Let me say this to my son because every now and then he will watch. And if he watches this, I just want to say that you could not be a better son to anyone on the planet. And if there was a thousand sons lined up, boys lined up, I'd pick you every time. I love you more than anything. Well, I concur because I, I know your son personally, and I have right. to believe that you and I were sons like that to our fathers and didn't hear that. So, well, and, and, and that's the whole reason we're here, man. Look, we, yeah. we are still dented cans. We're not perfect. We're never going to be perfect. Whatever we suffer and struggle with, we are still going to do that. Maybe less degree. I know it is with you and I know it is with me too. And the people listening, I just wanted to, to raise awareness of the, uh, the insanity of life. You're not alone. We're with us. And I, the, the one fact I wanted to point out more than anything is things that ended up being classics. I don't know if you like the movie, the Shawshank Redemption did not do well at the box office. <laughs> one of my top five movies oh, of all time. Best movie uh, of all time. I'll, I'll watch that. If it, if even if I'm traveling or something and it's on the hotel, I'll stop what I'm doing and, and watch oh, it. Yeah. And you, you, you know, everybody is the people that like it, love it. They've seen yeah. every scene in it. Uh, another one is The Odd Couple. When I was a kid, I loved that show with uh, yeah. Oscar and Felix. That uh, did not do well in the ratings when it first came out the first time around. There are many, many examples of that in show business and entertainment that later became cult classics, whatever you want to call it. And the reason that that happened is they did what they did. It wasn't the norm. They weren't following trends. They just kind of leaned into it and said, this is who we are. This is what we do. And the audience are going. Another one is uh, uh, John Cleese from Monty Python did a show called Faulty Towers. I believe there's there's only, I think it was 17 or 18 episodes. Have you ever seen it? Usually it's on PBS. And it was very raw in the way they did it. And the, the times weren't even equal. It's just uh, we stopped when we ran out of jokes. I, I saw him interviewed one time. That's another one that's considered a classic. That But it came out, eh. So I know you and I, we did a podcast, and especially all the work you put in production-wise, kudos to you for that. But uh, we thought, okay, we'll get 800,000 people, and, and, you know, it's not that. There's not a comma in it. We haven't made a penny. In fact, we lost money. You put up you know, good money out of yours for equipment that we used at your house in the studio. Now we're doing it on Zoom. We could have done that all along for free, but did we know that? No. The point is, our heart was in it. Our soul was in it. We put good content out, and those people that we just mentioned and more – 
got it. And we appreciate every soul that watches this show. Yep. Also, uh, the guys at Right Clip Digital for helping us out with the website. They're phenomenal. They're in uh, Il- Edwardsville, Illinois, Cowensville, mm-hmm. Illinois, and uh, phenomenal guys. And and I don't know if anybody's ever been to the website, and that's okay. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we've well, we, we haven't plugged it that much either. Nah, we don't need to. We don't need to. It's been fun. And I think, you know, if I were to go back, I know that you don't like to watch yourself and you know, you, you compare yourself to other people. I would challenge you, Mr. Maxwell, to go back and watch yourself on, on a couple of these because there'd be no harm in it and you might learn something about yourself. I think that um, from the first episode that we did, I think in New Year's Day in Kenosha, in a hotel room um, that uh, I drove up, you actually live in that area, and I drove up and got a hotel room and we set up all this equipment and lighting and cameras and we had like a uh, water you know to drink we had yeah, yeah we had it all just set up and we, we had it mapped out on a legal pad and we we taped i don't know how many episodes over several yeah and, it was all day thing yeah and then if you go back and you look at you know you you left at the end of the day and you were like man you were wiped out i remember that you know and i was too i just laid on my back and because it's emotional to talk about this stuff and it takes a lot of brain power. Uh, my whole point is if you were to watch that, I think there's been some growth even from that day to right now. I know there has, you know, and, and I might go back and be tempted to erase some of the episodes because I wouldn't want what I'm saying out on the internet, <laughs> but I won't do that. I won't, do, I'll I'll let it, uh, I'll let it just be what it is, you know, you know, and I think uh, in fact, we talked about this off the air, that uh, you have other things going. God bless you. Kudos. If you want to plug them, please do so. But what I want to say is I'm going to start the series over again. And we have our Facebook group, uh, the dented cast of thousands. If you want to join, if you're watching this, you're not a member, please do that. You post great inspirational things almost every day. And I try to do the same thing, follow suit. And our, uh, our viewers and and members are starting to do that too. I want to start the series over again because it's all on YouTube and you can watch them and just every week, every Sunday, Try to make a habit of it. And there'll be people that say, oh, I never saw this the first time it was out. Just like right. a TV show. You know, and, and as you succeed in your business, and I've got other projects going too, it'll all lean back to this. Hey, you want to watch our dented cast thing? So we planted seeds. It, it, it was on our own time, our own dime. No one told us to do it. So I, I'm really uh, thrilled to take this adventure with you, man. It was good. And I know we had some good vibes. And all those people that we mentioned, if they're dented cans, they're still great people too. Yeah. Yeah, they are. I, you know, and I, I think my, my sister-in-law told me that my brother-in-law uh, listens to us and I, that just came to my mind too. And he is a, just an incredible guy. I haven't been the, the best brother-in-law over the years, but, but he's been a solid guy and, and uh, my family loves him very much too. And I know that sometimes he listens. So thank you, Matt, if you're listening today, thanks for listening, buddy. Thanks, Matt. And hopefully, like Max and I have improved in the year that we've done this, listeners have as well. Hopefully, yeah. maybe we touched a topic, maybe, you know, popped a boil and some pus ran out and some subjects that are just, man, you know, you can talk about forgiveness and there are some things you can't forgive. I can't forgive, you know, whatever, whatever the example is of every sub- subject topic that we talked about, hopefully it'll help somebody individually by watching it. I, I agree with that. I agree with that. And, you know, there, there are some, there are some good good moments, self-reflection, uh, like, like you just mentioned, I do think that forgiveness is truly the key for everything. And it's very hard. I understand, uh, from my own experiences and from people that I've offended and hurt too, um, that can't forgive me. And, and, you know, believe it or not, I understand that too. I understand that too. Uh, but I, I do think it's the key. I really do think it's a key. And, and we, we, did a episode on that. And I would encourage anybody to go back and watch that. Like Dobie said, he's going to reintroduce from the first episode on, which I think is a fantastic idea. Thank you for doing that, Dobie. Uh, but th- what was your You're favorite welcome. episode that comes to mind? Your favorite where you felt like, boy, that was great. Uh, without embarrassing you in any way, you were at your father's grave and you wept openly. And I have never seen more raw pure human humanity and emotion than that day. And I wanted to back off and let you be you because it was beautiful. And I've had other people mention that. And it's hard, especially for a man, 
to, to cry in front of other people. I've never been afraid to do it. I think it's wonderful and it's human. And I was really proud of you for doing that. And you are the uh, person that produces the show. So the, oh, I don't want to run that one. I was praying to nobody that exists, <laughs> praying that you would not say, I don't want to run that. Thank you for doing that. I know I cried too several times and talking about stuff and, and it wasn't for dramatic purposes. It wasn't thespian Shakespeare. That was real, man. I'm yeah. going both ways. Well, that's what I was proud of. Here is the thing on that. And cause you know, you've called me out a few times on the show and rightfully so for having OCD, there's probably no question uh, that, that that's a correct diagnosis. <laughs> and I love you like a brother. So it's okay for you to say it. I, you know, I'm not saying it in a bad way, but no, you're saying it cause it's the truth. Uh, but here's, here's the OCD creeping into that episode, that particular episode one um, I'm harsh on my father, but I did love him. And I told you that standing in front of his grave. Um, I did love him. And, you know, there was a lot of times I just wanted to feel like he loved me and that I mattered and, and that uh, I was he was proud of me, you know. And so those those are those simple things is what I, I wanted out of our relationship. And, um, you know, there were times there were flashes of it, but there's a lot of pain that goes with that relationship, too. And I forgive him. But the problem with that episode from my standpoint was one of the cameras died while we were doing it. So what is on YouTube is a side shot camera. So my back is actually to, to most of the episode and you and I are talking, plus the wind was screwing up the microphone. And, um, you know, th those, I think about those things and see, that's the OCD in me because, yeah, I don't know that anybody else was thinking about that. Nobody was. And that's OK. If you want to go back and do it again, we can do it again. No, I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> that's one thing. You, you couldn't do it again. And I don't care about production value. I know you do, and you're great at it. But the point is the rawness, the emotion. I mean, we grew up in a generation where to get on television really meant something. It was highly produced. Now, anybody in the grandma can take their phone and film somebody. And the, the standards that people watch things are so low right now. It's the content, not the production quality. And it doesn't mean I'm right. doesn't mean you're wrong. I know you want it to be good that way. But damn, that was a good episode. Yeah, well, thank you. And you've, you've done that, and, too. And, yeah. and thank you. I mean, you know, we went to your place where you grew up, went to the place where I grew up. And for anybody to do that, even in your head, is hard. We physically packed up the truck, packed up the equipment. You drove to Milwaukee. I drove to Iowa. And we did that. And I think that paints a picture not only of who we are to the viewer, but also to themselves. It's like, man, those guys went back in a place that it's hard to go back to those places, man. Mm -hmm. So it's like crapping your underwear, you know, and taking it off. And then a month later, putting that same pair back on. I mean, and it's not comfortable, man. <laughs> it's squishy and icky. I don't, I don't like the thought of that at all. So I'm I don't either. But that's, I, I really think it's that ugly. It's uh, that icky with people going uh, back to those horrible things. You know, I remember when my father had a face to face with him when I was 31 years old. He said, look at me. Am I the evil ogre that you remember as a kid? And I said, yeah. Yeah, you are. And it's like, it, they don't realize, I don't think, sometimes the damage and the danger that we do and uh, all the things that, man, you, you have made such great statements that calm me down. You're less emotional than I am. I, I really think so. And you know, I fly off the handle. You're, you're very calm. And it's like, you know, yeah, you got to forgive and all those things. And I think we compliment each other really well because sometimes I'm going to strangle somebody. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just being human. Other people want to do that too. You get angry, you get hurt, you get sad. One day you wake up and you can conquer the world. The next day, a little a bug fart will knock you over and kill you. Mm -hmm. Well, I just you just you just blew me away with that comment. I have never in my lifetime ever, and there's probably one or two, there, you know, two people watching this right now. No one has ever accused me of being really calm, ever. <laughs> No, nah, you're I'm, a calm dude, man. You, I'm not. I'm, not I'm really not. You know, but I mean, maybe I'm becoming that way now. Maybe because of yeah. awareness and, yeah. yes, and yes. changing a little bit. Um, my wife even said recently, she goes, "You are not even the same person that you were a couple of years ago. Not even close." So, I would agree. Yeah. I see it in a year. But yeah. here, here's the kudos to you again. And, and if you were an idiot, I would tell you that too, because I am one on a daily basis. You have not only forged a plan for your life. You have followed that plan. I've known you a long time, man. And if you say you're going to do something, you do it. You talk about riding a bike 20 miles and that, that's that all that's hard. Journaling, eating well, 
mm-hmm. exercising every day, not just once or twice and going back to the lifestyle. Ah, oh, it sucks. It doesn't work. I tend to be that way sometimes. You know, say, ah, you know, I got so many things to do. I'm not going to exercise today, blah, blah. You are inspiring me to do those things to get on a program. Hopefully I'm inspiring you, if by nothing else, to not be like me. <laughs> That's okay too. <laughs> and if somebody watches, it's like, okay, God, at least the guy, it, it's hard to admit, you know what? I ain't shit. It's hard to admit that. And I think yeah. a lot of people don't. I don't know if Larry Bumgarner would. Uh, Russ Dobryant would not. He would never admit I was wrong. I was bad. I sucked. I was bad. Father. Nothing. I'm admitting it all. God, you know what? Let, let's put one little pebble on top of the next and try to build something rather than just blame everybody else. And if nothing else, and if nobody out of 8 billion people ever watches this show, we did it for, for good. Right. I, I, I can't. I'm so proud of that. Yeah. Well, you should be. And thank you. Uh, you know, I think anybody that knows you knows that uh, your emotional outbursts and those kinds of, like you said, you were known as the razor, you know, that's not really who you are. That's a response to stimulus. Who you really are is, you know, you've put pictures up before is you're still that, you know, that young, innocent boy that just wants to be loved. And you want to show other people love too. That's who you really are. You know, I mean, you're a full grown man, clearly, uh, but you have a lot of love to give people and, and you've been looking for it back this whole time. And I think when people give it back to you, you, I mean, you'll do anything for them. I've seen it happen. I mean, you know, someone just sends you just a, a little something, uh, some little token, you will go out of your way to just pour into that person, no matter who it is. And I've seen that with you, witnessed that with you over the years, many, many times. I said that we've known each other over 15 years. It's actually uh, this this coming November going to be 20 years. Yeah, buddy. So, Amazing, yeah. isn't it? So, yeah, it's crazy. It really is crazy. So, yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm really excited that we did this and I, I agree with you. I don't think this has to be necessarily the end. Uh, you and I both have other, other projects we're going, I'm trying really hard to get my wife's business up and running in Florida. And, uh, you know, that's exciting. And, uh, to see her, you know, uh, a woman, for instance, who, uh, was in a bad marriage with me, uh, to see her, completely blossom as a human being and to be part of that transformation. I don't want to weep openly here, but to see her just become this uh, really, really confident, ultra productive person who truly believes in herself. That is, I give credit to, to the person that you don't think exists, but I give credit, I give credit to God on that. I truly do, man. Okay. So I do. I, and uh, you know, so that's been fantastic, you know, I'm happy to see it too, because I, I think the world of her and, and your whole family. Yeah. And I think, you know, as you go on in life, you choose the people you focus your attention on. Yeah. And as kids, dented cans, we don't have that choice. Mm-hmm. And people say, well, you, you choose your parents before you're born. I don't know if I believe that. I've heard that my whole life. You know, do you believe? I, I don't know if it's true or not. The point is, uh, I must have been drunk when I made that choice. <laughs> oh, Whatever wanna- lessons. <laughs> you wanted Whatever. a challenge. Yeah. yeah, well, I got a hell of a one. And I looked at, I thought about that one day. I love the hardest challenges. I mean, I play uh, online chess sometimes, uh, online Scrabble. I am not happy until I'm on level 10. And it kicks my ass and I get a four move checkmate over there. That's the only time I'm happy is if I'm going after the hard challenge. So maybe that's my personality. And I did choose, give me the, the mother that abandons, abandons you at five months old, the father that's complete ass. You, know, you throw yourself out there naked into the world to get crapped on your whole life. And looking back at it now, it's like, maybe that's what I did want. Right. It's like, boy, I, I don't want that now. But looking back on it, the only reason that I think it was good to go through is we consider having this conversation. Cause there are people that watch it. It's like, ah, I thought my life was screwed up till I look at you. And then other people, I look at their lives. It's like, well, you look at me. I look at you. I don't want your life and your problems. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like that underwear again. I don't want to change your underwear with my under. I don't want that either. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, hopefully we did make some progress. We have a long way to go. And if you had to do this all over again, what, what would you do? How would we do it? Would we write a book? Would we have a better plan? We just did it. And right. I think, yeah. And I think that's the key. I think that's the key because so many people, and I'm not a fan of everybody who, cause, cause most people talk about what they're going to do and then don't do it. And that, uh-huh. I think that's really normal for a lot of people. Yeah. Someday I'm going to, 
you know, blah, blah, blah. Or I'm, I'm working on this. You know, I'm working. Well, what do you mean you're working on it? What exactly does that mean? Does that mean that you've started it? Does that mean that you've completed it? Does that mean, you know, what's that mean? I'm working on it. Usually it doesn't mean anything. It just means that lip service and they're not doing anything. They're, they've thought about it a couple of times and then they go take a nap or watch uh, Netflix for five hours, you know? And I've, tr- I've been trying yeah. to extricate that stuff out of my life. So instead of television, I'm like, I-, I consume a book. Like if I pick up a book, I mean, I knock it out that day or in 24 hours, you know, and highlight dog ear and stuff. I mean, I'm consuming information like I've never consumed it before, you know? And then uh, and I never used to do this because of my OCD. I-, I never used to pick up a book and stop reading it if I thought it was not a good book, you know, and now if I get, you know, through the first chapter or two like that, and I realize it's, you know, it's a waste of time. I put it down and move on, you know, too many books to read, to read a bad one. That's true. Yeah. I I want to share one story uh, that that I, if I did on the other, on another episode, okay, watch it again. But there was a student in my class who was probably, I'm not going to mention his name. I know he's not watching, but I won't mention his name. The worst student I've ever had. He, He was, he had the, the brain of a six-year-old. There was something wrong with the kid. And this just was. I tried to be nice to him in every way. He was, he was OCD. He was all the initials. He was everything that you had. And he wrote an entire movie script. He did. He wrote it out in the format that you're supposed to write it. And he asked me if I would read it. Okay? It was kind of an autobiographical movie about himself. And he was maybe 30 at the time. And I read it. And the third page in, he, he got a parking ticket. And the cop took him into the, the holding cell in the prison and he was getting anally raped in the, this is in the script of that he had. So he gets a parking ticket. He's in the holding cell and he's getting anally raped by the, that's the character. And I'm reading this on page three. I'm thinking, is this a joke? Is, am I getting punked? And I'm looking at this. Like, but if, if Steven Spielberg's limo broke down and came to my class, Hey, does anybody have a movie script ready to go? I have a million dollars and a, and a deposit. He had one completely horrible that it was. I am allegedly this professional comedian. I didn't have anything to show. Right. I might have had stories. I might have talked about it. He took the time, as weird and whacked and off the wall as it was, to actually physically get it done. And he could hand somebody, there's my movie script. Doesn't matter if it's good or not. So the same with us. We didn't, there's no anal rape in our show anywhere, nothing like that. Thank it's not Lord. off the wall. Thank the <laughs> Lord for that. I don't want to pitch or catch. I'm not into that whole game. The point is, we did it. Yeah. And if somebody says, Well, you got to, how's that pocket? Well, we got 100 episodes. Check out, check out one. You might not like it. Maybe you will like it. Right. Yeah. You, you got 99 more chances if you don't like the one that you see. Right. So. Right. And, and you're right. You're right about that. And, and I like to, uh, again, I'd like to, I told you this last week in last week's episode, but thank you, by the way, for, for keeping your word to me. That means a lot. You know, uh, it's hard for dented cans that have new ideas and maybe a little ADD coming at them, uh, to, to stay focused on. And you did this whole time all for what, for 100 episodes you did. So thank you for that. You're very welcome. It was just a pleasure all around, man. We worked together on the radio. We knew this would work. We took it a little chance and everything everybody does isn't a grand slam home run for the long haul. Hopefully this leads to something. It has already led to something for me. I'm going to plug my thing right now. Just my type podcast. It's about diabetes. They reached out to me. It's like nitro met glycerin. Boom. It's going to work. Not that ours didn't work, but diabetes is a lot more common with the public. There's some, and there's probably more dented cans than there are diabetics, mm-hmm. you know, dented, dented can diabetics for 500 Alex. I'm sure they mix the whole thing too, but uh, that's the whole thing with a, a company and a budget and, and all the things behind it. And the bigger that gets, this will get traction because people can say, I want to see what else you're doing too. So again, one thing led to another. You're doing your thing. If you want to plug yours, you told me some ideas. I don't want to put you on the spot, but I thought they were fantastic ideas of a YouTube channel you want to do. Well, thank you. Um, you okay, know, if you don't. You know me. I'm OCD, and I would rather announce it when I've got them done and ready to publish. So so yeah, keep, a, a- keep contact with Max, and when you do, <laughs> on our Facebook group, I will announce Max has a new project. Okay, sounds good. Listeners there will go and see what it is. I will say that it's uh, what I've got already in the can. Uh, is not only captivating, but it is, it's, it's going to be incredibly hard for someone to turn it off once they see, once they start. And, and which is the exact, not, op- what's that? Is the exact opposite of our show. Very easy to turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I see the anal- analytics, you know, uh, cause you could do that on YouTube. 
And by oh, the way, that's scary. By the way, I love, I absolutely love YouTube. And I'm not saying that because this is on YouTube. I'm saying it because I love YouTube. I cannot believe how wonderful YouTube is from a standpoint of you can fix anything. You can learn about anything. There's a lot of garbage on YouTube. There's a lot of people who don't know how to get to the point on YouTube. Uh, but there's also just an amazing amount of wisdom and knowledge and quality, just quality, you know, uh, and you got to find it. You got to sift through and sift through. It's like looking for a piece of gold, you know, and the, but, I like uh, life, isn't it? Yes. Yes, it is. But I am such a fan of YouTube. And that's why I, you know, I'd like to continue trying to contribute to the greater good by providing some, just some value and not having the thought of, we're going to get rich and be YouTube stars and drive Lambos, but I'm actually providing value. And this is a vehicle that I can do it for free and, and, and give it to somebody else for free. Wait, wait, you mean we're not? <laughs> would you even know how to drive a Lambo if you had one? Yeah, I would. Would you? Not very well. <laughs> Wouldn't be very good. It'd be kind of fun. I like my, my, well, we talked about that. Uh, what? Go ahead. You know, you, you, uh, I, I've been driving crappy cars my whole life and you sent me something, which I'll post on our Facebook group. There was a car with a door off. It said, Hey, I found your car. <laughs> and it was, it was funny and I laughed, but it also made me cringe and wince because my father had crappy cars our, our, my whole life as a kid. Right. And I don't know, I don't think he had enough confidence in himself to buy a new one for whatever reason he didn't. And subconsciously, I did it. I, I had crappy cars because I had to drive as a comedian and I, I had some new cars, but I would put so many miles on it. The warranty would run out. I'd be upside down. So my theory was buy a crappy car, drive it as long as I could, and then buy another one. So did I focus on my, my father? Cause when my sister and my, my brother, uh, t- we'd always see a crappy car. Oh, here the, the Russ, Russ is going to buy that one next is because his personality was so strong. Crappy cars reminded us of him. Right. And then crappy car reminded you of me. I'm thinking, boy, the harder I tried to get away from him, the more I failed. I just think well, it, it was I, funny. I laughed. I thought I wasn't, I know you didn't do it in a mean way, but I looked at myself. I'm thinking, I guess I have some growing to do. Well, and, and, and no, I didn't mean it, but your response was classic Dobie. You said, I've got the door, which I love. <laughs> that was, that was the text. I have the door. You said, so that was great. You can, know, can we post a- it on this episode? I'll, I'll post it on the, uh, our Facebook page. It's a funny picture. Yeah, I, I might still have it on my phone. That was just I'll send it to you. We'll post yeah, it. but uh, it, that was here in, in Key West. I'm taping this in Key West and we're getting ready uh-huh. to take off here. And that, by the way, sitting in front of a three million dollar house, that car. Oh, sure. So so it could be the guy that owns the three million dollar house that drives that car. He's like, screw it. Why do I need to go get a door? I'm on an well, island, you know, so, exactly. Yeah, yeah it's so. 75 degrees every day. So yeah, <laughs> it, does, it does rain there, though. Right. I, mean, I think it's inside gets wet. Yeah, it's it's rained a little bit. But, you know, I mean, it's dry. You know, it's it, it's I, I absolutely love it here. I really do love it here. I'm not kidding. So I mean, it's hard I've not to there. hard not to like, you know, so. And there are many times I love so, it too. Now, would you see this uh, as we grow as people are you moved, you know, and it's yeah. like you went to another place. Does that have to do with your change and your growth? Do you think? Yes. I, and I would encourage that for everybody because uh, like when we were, we were both kids, you know, we've talked about be, me being a housing kid. I wasn't a housing kid the whole time. Um, when my parents split up, I was in housing for a little bit of the time, you know? Uh, but I, I remember wanting to be in housing because our home was so horrible, you know, just fueled with rage and alcoholism and just screaming and yelling. And when you're 10 years old, you can't, you can't go anywhere. You can't get away from it. So I remember looking at that, that unit in the housing is, I, I, we walked in and I was just, I thought that was wonderful that we were there. I, I remember the smell of the fresh paint on the wall still to this day. And I had to share a bedroom with my little brother who was two, you know, two years old. And I, it was just me and him. And I remember I, I bought uh, two albums. One was Off the Wall from Michael Jackson and one was uh, Back in Black from ACDC. And I had those two albums and a little record player in that, in that room. And I just sat there with headphones on. And I listened to both those albums, kind of a, you know, <laughs> in the yang kind of thing. That's all right. Would be funny. None of us like Pink Floyd. If you had Pink Floyd, the wall, and Michael Jackson off the wall, the wall right. off the wall. 
<laughs> I love it. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I liked Pink Floyd until we were forced to play, uh, forced to play it all the time. And then I, Oh my God. That's one thing in the morning, you know, we had to play music. And so on the radio, we only got to talk just a few minutes, an hour. Yeah. You know, and to have to hear that, that yeah, morning radio is not the glamour. If you're getting in, you think watching this, you think about getting into morning radio. Don't do it. Oh. Paint, paint houses. It's more glamorous. Oh, or start a YouTube channel. You're in more in control, you know, of that. But that's true too. You, you know, as we close out this 100th episode, here's what I've learned. And I wasn't in your household as a child when you were being raised by your grandparents. But here's what I've learned. By listening to you and the stories, what I've learned is the little girl that you got to see right before your grandma went to be with the Lord, um, she came out. The little girl came out in her 80s. That that free spirit came out. So you got to see that. Yeah. That, that little girl uh, was damaged by her environment, her parents, whatever, and became, ah, you know. And then she turned right around and did that to her own sons because, you know, based on everything that you've said, you know, your dad and then his brother were both just not Bastards. not nice people, you know, nope. but, we're, but remember hurt people hurt people, right? So they had a bad, they clearly had a bad experience as kids. They really did, you know? And so then they did it to their kids. You know, you have a cousin, Brett, who you call a dented can, who I, I have yet to meet. I Hi, want you to meet him. Hi, Brett. Hopefully he doesn't watch. watch. I don't think he's, he's still yeah. got an AOL account. Yeah. <laughs> I love him. Yeah. But, he, but he's, he's not a viewer. But, you know, there again, you know, he you guys both had that. And all along the way is a child that gets damaged. So starting with the little girl that your grandma was. Um, and then you, I think you said something about she was like her mom. I don't know. I can't remember all of the details, but her mom was who knows who her dad was basically. Yep. Yeah. And hey. we'll just stop right there, but you know, uh, take that as you would like. And then your dad, you know, who knows, you know, he was funny. He was witty. Maybe some of that you got from, you know, your talent, you got from him as much as you resent that. Wow. Um, well, Maybe you yeah, did. No, I don't because, know. Maybe you're right. Because my, uh, my, and I, I got to say this too, uh, in the 100th episode, I don't want to uh, be identified solely with pain. You know, just like we did last week, that episode on, uh, do you have a, a victim mindset? I got to tell you, man, um, to say that every day of my childhood was abusive is a bold faced lie. It's, it was not. In fact, I had people who cared about me. My mom uh, is not a bad person. We've never really gotten along, maybe because of the pain that was around us, you know, all the time and different personalities. Mm -hmm. My dad was actually, if you didn't know he was my dad, you would probably love him. I mean, because he was a lot of fun. He really was. I mean, he was a lot of fun. Uh, it's just that that's all it was for him. It was a steady diet of, uh, you know, entertainment, television, nic uh, you know, nicotine, alcohol, uh, just always feeding impulses throughout every day of his entire life. And so being a father, being a good employee, reading a book, all those things, that, that didn't matter to him. But I think about him from the same standpoint as being a, a young little boy in Wapolo, Iowa, wanting the attention of his father. And his father was 43 years old when he was born and a chronic alcoholic, his father, who I'm named after, who I never met was, uh, his dad was doing really well in and had a gravel truck company. And then the depression wiped him out. So my grandfather, my dad's dad went from being very wealthy to having nothing. And that, that would probably work on somebody's brain a little bit too. You know, sure. And so you you think back, and and I I, I just want to say that I think all these people that were demonizing, if we can ever get back, you know, past where they became who they were and hurt us, and really look at it from the standpoint of they were dented cans too, they had someone do that to them, and so they were victims, and then they 
perpetuated the same pain that they knew onto us. And I, you know, my goal, at least for my family is to stop it with me. And, uh, I, I am successful and I will remain successful. I would rather die right now (laughs) than ever have my kids resent me for anything in the future. I really would. And, um, my wife as well. It's just, you know, it's, it, no matter how hurt you are, it's up to you to fix that. Unfortunately, it's up to you to fix it. It's not up to anybody else. I couldn't say it any better. You know, I look at the bed, yeah, they were dented cans and that's not a bad thing. It's what you do with it, how right. you react. Right. And as little as we tried to do this, uh, it might it have an, an impact in the world now. It sure had an impact on me. And I think it did on you too. It forces us to focus. It forces us to focus on what we should be thinking about and doing. And while it wasn't always easy or smooth, we had a couple episodes there. When we went to Milwaukee, man, I was not in a good place. That stirred up a lot of evil soup that I didn't, I wasn't ready for on that particular day. I'm glad we did it. Go back and watch the episodes. Maybe it'll stir up some stuff with you. The point is we weren't that, you know, I, I, I don't want that either. You know, you have a family and, and a wife and kids to carry on. I, I chose not to do that. And I don't think I was ready. So on this cosmic pebble and this time through, I got to do it alone, man. And that can be scary. Closing this episode, I'm scared shitless of the world the way it is right now. And to be a dented can, I have no one to cling to. And no one to say, okay, I'm going to go out there and fight it just because I'm going to raise my kids and feed my family. I don't have that. You know, I'm just a a turd floating on the ocean, man. I don't know where to go, what to do. So this is focused for me. I appreciate that. So thanks for doing that. But going forward, man, my roots are not there. I don't know what to do. Yeah, just well, be honest with you. you know what my answer is, and, and it's uh, my imaginary friend, as you call it. Uh, but well, that's, I just that's I, my I, answer. Ain't, I ain't feeling it. You know, I'm sorry. And if you are, I love you for it. That's great. Yeah. I don't. I can't fake it and say that I do. You know, I talk to some women that I'd say, well, uh, I can't date anyone that doesn't believe in our heavenly father. Well, I guess we're not going to date because I'm not going to just I, again, I don't fault people for doing it. I don't see it. Maybe there's a switch on inside me. That's not good. It used to be on. It's off now. And it was off to my grandmother. It was off to my grandfather, the two that raised me. That's the only thing they ever agreed on was that's bullshit. At the end of it, I heard them both say it basically on their, you know, the last coherent thoughts that they made. I don't know if that influenced me or not. But again, we all have to make our individual choices. Yep. And we live in Whether America. And, no, and no, even if we didn't, you still got to make those kind of choices. You could be in any country in the world and believe in God or not believe in God or be a good parent or a good sibling, or a good friend, or a good employee, or a good human being, you know, what to do. So those are the choices we made. This is where we are. It's not a, it's always a work in progress. It's not complete. So moving forward, I wish you all the best, man. If you're listening to us, if you want to hit like, if you want to subscribe, too late. We're not making any more episodes for a while. So <laughs> windshield wipers. Windshield it's raining. wipers. <laughs> <laughs> if nothing else, that hope that catches on. I, think, oh, I that, just think that's funny. Well, well you, you, you made it. So Mr. Lucky. So that's just like you. a nine-year-old. That's a nine-year-old kid would say. You know, yeah, yeah. And turn on the windshield wipers. So if, <laughs> if we have one legacy from the show, hopefully it's that. Man. Any parting shots, brother? I love you. I really appreciate working with you. This doesn't have to be over forever. Just a no. little, take a little break. We'll come back to it somehow, some way. Yep. Yep. And uh, no, thank you. I said what I had needed to say and thank you. And and I've seen some growth and, you know, just being able to, to talk openly about some of this stuff is, is evidence that there's growth going both ways. So, so right. Thank you. So before yep. we end this thing, I just want to say I never liked you. I carried you the whole time and windshield wipers forever. Love you, buddy. We are the Dented Cast. We're coming back sometime. Watch for it. Start over. Start the cycle. Love you, man. Talk to you. Bye bye. <laughs>